Hello and welcome to Finland. Welcome to winter. Welcome to my channel. My name is Kika. Today I'm gonna show you 100 no face photo ideas. So basically pictures when you really like taking a photo but you don't want to have your face in it. I'm standing out here. Um, as you can see there's snow and it's really cold but um, I'm gonna put on my jacket very soon but I just wanted to show you uh, the merch that I've designed myself. So this is a jumper that I've designed. Uh, so if you'd like to check out the whole collection, I'll put the link in the description below. Perfect as a little Christmas present for somebody. <coughs> wink, wink. <laughs> um, anyways, let's get uh, right into it. I was actually gonna do this video inside, but it's so dark. There's absolutely no light and it's 2.30 p.m. Um, so I'm gonna do it out here instead. Let's see. This would be so much easier to do inside. Okay, <laughs> I am ready. The first idea is to just use your hands to cover up your face, but you can do this in many creative ways. So for example, painting your hands and adding some storytelling with some paint or having a frame in a frame or doing something really extravagant or really fantasy-like, for example, like putting wings on your back. And then suddenly when you have your hand on your face, it brings a whole new meaning to the whole photo. Think about how you could camouflage yourself into the background with a matching outfit or if you find a really cool location. This was an old boat shed that I found and then I gave a bit of friends with this guy or this old man who was hanging around there and I asked if I could take a photo because I thought that the wall had this amazing texture and just the passing of time. So it's all about thinking of how you could use locations and to tell a story. And then um, if you're in that spot that you don't really have a prop, then just use your hands. Next up we have colorful and fun props to make you look like a carefree and fun-loving human being. <laughs> so props are a great way to add some color to your photo and also really good to hide behind. It's a good idea to get inspired by the seasons, whatever is sort of current at the moment. So for example, right now, because we're entering the Christmas season, uh, you could think of like gingerbread or Christmassy florals or leaves and things that you could use and hide behind or have behind your back or use as eyes and just see what you have around and play around with it. Don't take it too seriously. And it's a really good thing for those days where you just can't really think of a good idea. A fun and colorful pop. We'll do the trick. <laughs> All right, and I do realize that it's not everybody's cup of tea to go around with balloons and fun and colorful props. So the next one is props to make you look more intellectual and smart. Uh, obviously thinking of books here, maybe newspapers, but you don't have to just be reading them, but you can think again how you style the whole setting. And maybe if you have like some nice light and some nice backdrop, maybe doing a stack of books. Um, books is something I again and again use in my photos just because they are really pretty and they in themselves mean storytelling and symbolize that uh, but yeah also makes you look a little bit smarter which is uh, never hurt anybody all right this next one I think you're gonna like it's using reflections and shadows in your photos this is a really really powerful thing to use in photography which is all about creating optical illusions so by using mirrors and reflection you can create more depth in your photo and actually not show yourself in the image even though you're taking the photo maybe just showing a little bit of a slice of yourself or then using shadows or placing yourself so the sun is shining <laughs> from the back of you so you only create like a silhouette again a really powerful way to create some mystery in the photo and while you're still in the photo so you're a silhouette but you can't really see your face you can only kind of see the contours which creates just so much drama in the frame itself and it's so much fun to play around with these things and photography is all about working with light so when you're doing these type of photos you also learn a lot about light and just observing it mirrors can be a little bit tricky to use uh, so I'd recommend to start just by taking some mirror selfies but taking it to the next level by styling your space and then you can also think about maybe using some Photoshop to create some really blah, 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 <laughs> illusions in your photos um, but again this is like an endless treasure trove of possibilities for no face photo ideas all right it's getting super dark it started to rain great great good great, great, great. <laughs> next up is to bring out your inner Vincent van Gogh uh, minus the ear cutting part and use 
paint to make uh, self-portraits with. So you could either, uh, well, these ones I photoshopped. Basically, I haven't actually painted these on the walls, but you could also paint on your body parts, make some tattoos. I don't have any real tattoos, uh, but then I can use paint to do that. Um, and it's just like a fun little way to bring something a bit creative into your photos and you don't have to show your face, but you can show your painting. So it's still something you made. All right, it's now starting to snow. It's super dark and quite cold and quite wet. I might have to continue this video tomorrow. Okay, I can still do maybe one more before I go inside. Let me see. Okay, I'm gonna do one more before it's getting completely way too dark. I don't know if you can see me anymore. Uh, good hair days, which mine just got ruined because it's snowy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, when you have a good hair day, why not take a photo of that? Or here is also just a really good way to cover up your face. And if you have bangs, you can hide behind that or you can turn yourself around. So actually you have your face, no, your back facing the camera and then put your hair. So it looks like, no, actually it's not your hair. It's your shirt. What am I talking about? Yeah, so you put your shirt on, like the other way. You get what I mean. Hair is great because it has so much texture in it, so it just looks quite nice in a photo. And my experience is actually with taking self-portraits, the most difficult part is to get the hair looking nice. So I always do spend a little bit extra time fixing my hair. Um, yeah, okay. Um, stay tuned for part two, which is probably gonna be tomorrow when it is not snowing and raining and dark and wet and cold. Ah, all right, where were we? Mm, I came indoors. I was thinking about should I go outside again? So it's the next day now, but it's so cold outside. So I think I'm gonna stay inside with my cozy knit, which brings me to the next category, which is dreamy and romantic props. So yes, maybe a little bit corny sounding, but working with this type of props to get that melancholic and nostalgic mood in your photos, for example, by using little butterfly stickers or just a star made from, so this is just from a paper cutout or cups or knits and just cozy things that you have around. I have two recommendations when you want to create these kind of dreamy photos. First of all, first, <laughs> first of all, uh, take them on a cloudy day. So then you'll just have softer and more scattered light. And it's also a little bit more bluish than yellowish. So when the sun is shining, um, the light is also more harsh. So go for cloudy days. My second tip is if you're indoors to place yourself next to a window and preferably sideways. So you have the window coming from the side because that will just create really nice shadows. Shadows? Yes. Well, light and shadow and depth in your photo. Continuing along the same lines, cozy homebody props. So here, think about cozy knits and textiles and blankets and cups and yeah, adding fairy lights to your photo just to create that nice cozy feeling uh, that works really well in a photo and is perfect for this season when it's quite dark outside. So we're spending a lot of time indoors and also due to other current events, spending a lot of time indoors, so making the most out of it. All right, for the next one, I moved in here. So I got all these fairy lights as my background because we're gonna talk about lens flare and light and different ways you could use that in your photo and not really show your face while you have it. So lens flare is great when the sun is shining and when it's sort of setting, so it's quite low in the sky, you can get these beautiful photos. Um, really create dramatic light. Here in Finland, it's really dark. I haven't seen the sun for a few days now. So uh, fairy lights is instead my go-to prop during the darker season. And so many fun things you can do that with. If you want to have that bokeh effect, one idea is to do um, to place a mirror and then take a photo. So you'll have the fairy lights uh, in front. So you get that really nice bokeh in your photo and uh, two apps to do this manually afterwards. So maybe you didn't get that um, nice lens flare that you wanted. There's one called uh, Bokeh Cam Fix and also Rookie Cam, which both allows you to manually go in there and create some bokeh and lens flare um, afterwards, yeah. Okay, next up we have movement. So a really good trick when you don't want to show your face is actually to move it 
uh, move it, move it, move yourself around so you're facing away from the camera or that you're so blurry that you can't see your face, but it's sort of distracting the viewer. So it's not so obviously the first thing is not gonna be like, oh, they're not showing their face, but actually your attention goes more into the actual movement. So make sure to put your camera on a quick shutter speed and even in burst mode and twirl around or jump around. Um, it's a fun way to get a lot of energy and dynamic in the photo. Or alternatively, you could just go for a really stiff pose and almost become like a statue or in this case, ballerina. Oh, it's really comfortable to be here. So I'm gonna do the next one here as well. Uh, put something on your head. The more ridiculous, the more fun and the better. <laughs> so obviously you could just have a hat, go for a little bit of a Michael Jackson moment, um, or a cup or a box or a book. Um, I think it's inherently something quite funny in it and just shows that you're not taking yourself too seriously and uh, kind of making a whole thing about not wanting to have your face in the photo. The next idea is to put your back into it, by which I mean to turn around, just face away from the camera. Uh, it's very simple, but a very effective trick. And instead you can guide the viewer's eye into what you're looking at, or if you're having a fantastical and kind of fairy tale like moment, um, there's something nice about not actually having your face in there because usually as humans, we're drawn to the eyes. So then when you take that away, um, you'll actually allow whoever's looking at the photo to look at what's going on, but you'll still have that human presence in there. I'm a total lover of vintage cameras. So even though I have two vintage cameras, but neither of them work, so I don't know if they work, but I've used them as props many times in my photos because I think it's something quite fun in reversing the roles. So actually when you're taking a photo with a camera and posing uh, right in front of the lens, but you'll sort of cover up your face, um, you're kind of taking the photo of the person who's looking at the photo, which I don't know, I like that kind of, that you're turning everything around. And maybe it's also a somewhat accurate depiction of our times because we're all taking photos with our smartphones and everywhere you go. And well, back when we could still travel and go to tourist sites, uh, everybody would have their phones out and taking photos. So it's also kind of a snapshot of our time. It's got a whole new level to it. You know me, I really enjoy making a good self-portrait with some flying stuff. And once again, here you can distract the whole attention from yourself and your face. So you can be looking at the things that are flying around. Uh, for this, you can, if you don't want to use Photoshop, you can just hang stuff up. So these origamis, I just made these little threads and I hang them up with just some tape from my ceiling and place myself in there and kind of camouflage myself in there a little bit or then uh, you could do these things with Photoshop. If you don't know how to do that, in my course, I show exactly step-by-step step how to do that. So if you're interested in that, I'll link in the description below the course to my, the course, no, the link to my course, so you can check it out. These next ideas is to just tilt your camera down a little bit and take a photo with only your lower half of your body showing. And here instead becomes really important how you place your feet and small gestures. So I've had some fun experimenting with this and just by turning your feet inwards a little bit or maybe pushing your pelvis kind of forward a bit to get like that attitude stance, you can have a huge impact in the overall mood and how you perceive this person in the photo to be and without having to worry about your facial expressions or where to place your hands. So you can just express so much with feet, which is, yeah, I don't know, sort of surprising, I think. Um, but definitely check this out or check this out. Definitely try this out. Um, it's a really kind of low bar, low bar. It's a really kind of easy stepping stone into then raising the camera and raising the bar. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean, yeah. And if all else fails, use flowers. Although these are uh, kind of dying on me. So uh, use fresh flowers or leaves uh, if you have that instead. And the flowers aren't really your thing because I do realize that they're quite uh, feminine and evokes a very kind of romantic uh, vibe. So you could also use leaves in your photos, but they are 
so great. Uh, they're definitely my go-to props. So a few weeks ago, I was doing the photo shoots for my, yeah, my new merch, so my t-shirts, and I uh, wanted to keep it really simple, but then I thought, how can I still have like some color and some vibrancy in there? So I just had all the plants. I took them to one room and had some flowers in there. And it just brings this kind of organic and down to earth um, mood, which I really enjoy. So flowers is like when you don't have any other ideas, definitely a go-to. And even if you have kind of a concept and you think it's a little boring or visually it's not so interesting, adding some greenery in there uh, is a great tip. Oh, it's a little bit cold. I'm standing on our balcony at the moment. That was it. That's a hundred no face photo ideas. I hope you got some ideas from these um, and we'll go out and try some of them out. Um, if you'd like to see more of my photos, you can come say hi. I'm over at Kutova Kika on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching this video with me. And again, if you'd like to see more of my designs, go and check out my merch shop. I'll link that in the description below. And also, if you're thinking about joining my course, Creative Photography with Kika, you can also do that. Uh, I'll also put the link in the description below. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello.